Hello, everybody, and welcome to Magical Monday. Oh, boy, yesterday was great with the Super Bowl. Just to find out that the Kansas City Chiefs, which was a 1980s prophecy, won their third Super Bowl, Trinity. And I thought it was great. I watched, like, a review because we're not really into football. And I watched a review, and I watched the very end where number 12 did the final score and that's a three that's that's trinity and yesterday was a three with the date it went all the way down to a three 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 and uh we had a lot of three there has been a lot of divine messages coming through and i am so excited because my husband has been channeling stuff also, and he has been pulling energy cards with me because he feels that he needs to. And if you feel that you need to, then you need to, because there's different messages from different people for the collective that's coming through in the energies. So this is a collective read, and uh, we are going to get right into it. Coffee and cards with Fawn. I hope you're ready. To fasten your seatbelt, buckle up, and let's get going because it's going to get good. Ooh. I'm going to watch some of that prophet too. Uh, you can find him on YouTube called, um, what was his name? Bob Jones. It was Bob Jones. Uh, just listen to me yesterday. I, I said his name and I wrote it down. And he his wife is still on YouTube showing his uh, past prophecies because he's passed away. So we got the first card and, you know, my husband was the first one to channel this message and I feel that it's, pro it's right that if God is going to heal the land, if source, our creator is going to heal the land in one swoop, 24 hours, one day, that's all he needs is one minute. He will heal us also. So, and we don't know, you know, we, we always say, I said something to somebody I said, wouldn't you freak out if you found out that source was feminine, like Mother Earth? And they just got quiet because we don't know. We know that they they took over the Bible and they changed a lot of the religious text and the spiritual text because they didn't want us to know. Um, we have to have a mother because if the creator made us in his like image, OK, you would have to have a feminine in the picture. And <clears throat> the Bible, <clears throat> unfortunately, went towards the masculine. Which is a shame because it always should have went for the balance, the masculine, the feminine and the inner child. So that was the mistake. And now we're correcting it. This is our time to shine. This is what. I love what it said. Our ancestors prayed for this. They prayed for us. So, and we were probably the ancestors at one time. So I really feel that we are going to get, because I think that um, Bob Jones said the same thing after the Super Bowl. This is what he said. After the third win from the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, we are going to go into a worldwide revival, the biggest revival that we've ever seen. And I'll have to look in my dream journal, but I think it was, most of my dreams happened from 2019 to 2000 and to, to now. And I have revival in my dream journal several times. I always felt that it was going to be a revival. The song Winds of Change by the Scorp Scorpio, Scorpio really put it into perspective. And if you look at the history and when that song was written, it was when the Berlin Wall came down. So it was like a freedom. It was like that, that deep breath that it's all over. With. And that's what I always felt when I heard that song. And that's what I feel the winds of change now. And I said that to my husband. We It's windy today and it, a little bit of rain. And I just, I just feel such a change in the air. I can't explain it. But the first card that just flew out <clears throat> 
was the number 11, which is a master number. It's double and it's healing. To be human is to be wounded, a time to connect body, mind, spirit, and soul. Let go of definitions and labels, nurture, passion, and seek pleasure, authenticity, honesty, and laughter. Find the source of dis-ease and distress. You need to forgive. Do what's necessary to increase well-being. Do not dwell on the unchangeable past. Shift your attention. Do not allow your pain to hurt others. Seek treatment. Do not be afraid. Uh, the healing card illustrates our third reason for being. However, it covers healing on several levels and does not necessarily suggest or imply that you are wounded or in need of healing, at least not on a conscious level. A happy, safe, and peaceful life does not always accord us with perfect healing and well-being. Every person is vulnerable to dis-ease, whether it manifests in physical, mental, or emotional stress, or as a feeling of emptiness and longing that is born of spiritual wounds. Humans are a part of the social order, with the elite and wealthy at the top and the uneducated and poor at the bottom. We are a spe species that is driven to win with each of us striving to do better, to be better than the generation that came before. Those at the top want to stay there and those at the bottom want to reach the top. We are goal oriented. Yeah, uh, we really are. And because, you know, they've made us that way. They've made us had to be we had to be the best of the best to make the best money. We had to get the best job to make the best money. Um, even if it was nine to five and we were stuck underneath uh, fluorescent lights all day, making ourselves dis-ease and having a phone on our ear, it didn't matter. We still had to go to work because we have to live. And believe the success moves us forward and failure sets us back. We are on a perpetual quest to improve, whether it be our social standing qualities of life or our simple desire to be a better person. We must be better. We must do better. But what is better? In our quest for betterment, are we making ourselves ill? In the simplest terms, we often see success and failure in the same light as we do life and death. To succeed is to live, to fail is to die, or worse still, to descend into poverty, mediocrity, or obscurity. We become fixated on being the best, succeeding at all we do, and yet we may still fall, fail to thrive. We may find we are not happy. We may find we are not healthy. Sometimes we find that even when we do accomplish our goals and are rewarded, rewarded with wealth and prosperity, we are not satisfied and crave more. Are we enduring? And doing only what we need to, to be done in order to survive? Are we so fixated on acquiring possessions that we have forgotten that happiness and well-being begin within us? Are we truly living? There is often so much going on around us in our day-to-day -day lives that we disconnect from our body, our thoughts, and emotions to such an extreme that when somebody asks, how are you, we automatically say, I'm well. Regardless of our true feelings or whether we are physically well or not, to do this is an act of self-preservation and hides our vulnerability, our weariness, our dissatisfaction, and our dis-ease from others. We may be afraid of being honest because to do so could reveal our weakness in a world where we must always be strong in order to survive and succeed. The sad truth is that we may not only be doing it in order to hide our true state from others, but to hide it from ourselves. The healing card symbolizes a need to reconnect and listen to what your body, mind, and feelings are telling you. <clears throat> to work with them instead of against them. Whether it be a simple as addressing a physical ailment or addressing the empty ache that comes from denying ourselves, ourselves enjoyment, and connection, this card signals that it is time to rip off the layers of illusion, the protective armor, and the mask, and look at what lies beneath. Are you fulfilled? Do you love your life? Are you happy, or do you need everything that you strive for in order to be happy? 
Are you living a fulfilled life that you love? Or are you simply enduring a dying a little bit more each day, each and every day? Um, this is a really good card that people need to hear. Uh, that was important right now. The healing card brings with it questions like these. It also asks you to look at your life and determine whether your path heals you or harms you. If it is the latter of the healing card reminds you that it is in your power to change direction. Yeah, uh, we're going down the road and we're journeying through this. And all of a sudden we come to a spot in the road where it's total chaos. And our journey stopped. And now it's cost, caused dis-ease in us because it's very chaotic. Do we want to stop or do we want to keep going? I would keep going on the, the quest. If something's going to make us at disease, I would keep going. I would pass it. Because with that, we got the number 13, the death card. And this is transformation. Isn't it amazing how we have the change and we've got the healing and we've got the transformation. And me and my husband have been channeling things that are saying that we are going to be okay, that we are not only going to get our land healed, which is behind him and beautiful, but we are going to transform and we are going to be healed. Right now, we're over here. There's a little bit of storm still going on all around us because our ship's sinking. We need to get over here, away from the sharks and into the tropical, the beauty of the the transformation and he's got the feathers on his staff this is like it, it it's a beautiful healing card and we're going to have a beautiful transformation we just have to hang in there buckle up and hang in there right here that I told my husband when these cards come out, I said, oh, my gosh, when these cards all come together, it is going to be another friggin' amazing reading. I just love the channeled messages that we're getting from the Earth School and the Mystery School, and I love the way they're coming out and giving us direction. Uh, the other card we got was the Two of Water. Going beyond infatuation and attraction, intimacy, sharing, giving, and communication, time to forgive and seek reconciliation, a meeting of minds and hearts, put aside judgment and blame, cherish all of your loves, maintain independence and avoid codependency, avoid taking sides. Um, right now, okay, we need each other. We don't need to be separated. So if you're in a partnership, a marriage, a family unit, whatever you're in, okay, you need to love each other and support each other. You need to be the safe harbor in the storm. You need to be that person. You know, I'm going to tell this story, and I told this story the other day. People ask me, you know, 38 years of marriage, well, almost 39 years of marriage, and we've had our moments. I'm not going to fool you. We have had our moments, okay? But I watched my parents, okay, have what I thought was a beautiful marriage. My father loved my mother with all his heart, and they worked hard, and he gave her beautiful things. We had a beautiful life. I always felt we were upper class, middle, middle class, but... As my neighbor says, you were really rich. So my parents were really rich. My father was a land developer and uh, busted his butt and loved to work. And he worked hard. He loved what he did. So uh, when they got divorced, I was 11. And it was very, my mother wanted a divorce because she couldn't deal with my father anymore. My father 
had a basically a panic attack in 77 on the way from Pennsylvania to Florida with her pit bull in the car. And he always told everybody that he wanted my mom at that point because he was on medicine like Valium or something. I don't know what he was on. But it was causing him to act stupid. And my mother just couldn't deal with it anymore, she said. And after three kids, and I think it was 14 years of marriage or 16 years of marriage. Yeah, I think it was 16 years of marriage. They separated. And I always thought, because they never fought in front of us, and he would always pinch her butt, and they'd always be playing, and he'd be taking her out. And I thought they had an amazing marriage. Everybody wanted to have that kind of a marriage. And then you find out that there was all kinds of uh, skeletons in the closet that nobody knew, you know, because that's how families and people are. They don't go around telling everybody about their uh, what goes on behind closed doors. So we have to remember, though, if my mother would have been the calm and the storm for my father when he was going through his storm, because we all go through these storms in our life as we're learning, they might have still been together. They might have had a beautiful life with three kids and a lot of money. And you know, when people split up, the money goes. My mother got half, my dad got half, they spent the money. My father ended up, they both ended up, you know, not doing great. But what I'm saying is this card to me right now is this is what I have to say. I've always said I would never leave my husband. And when I met him, he was my calm in my storm. But now he's going through, you know, some difficulty and I am his calm in his storm. So that's what you have to be when people are going through trials in their life and things are happening and people are getting sick and this and this and this. You have to hold yourself together, even if there is conflict and anger and words and things and just things happening. You have to be the calm in that person's storm when they're going through that because that's when they need you the most just when I needed you most. So this is what I'm feeling off this card. Uh, we have to put aside judgment and blame because if we're blaming somebody else for all of our problems, then we're just shifting the blame because we don't want to see it. We don't want to see that problem. It's too much pain. It's aggravating me too much. You did it. You did it. I want you to have that problem. I want you to explain yourself because I don't want to deal with it. So then the burden is shift to you as a mate, whatever, male, female, whatever. So we have to remember that if we let the hurt like that, friends, lovers, whatever, now is the time to let go of the hurt and anger. Put aside the judgment and blame and do not allow arrogance, wounded pride, or ego to destroy a relationship. Where you can take responsibility for your own choices and actions within the relationship and be mindful of how they have impacted and influenced that relationship. The two of water invites you to communicate, to forgive or apologize now. This is a very important card for us because soon, real soon, we will be going through this. This is what we are going to be going through. We are going to be going through healing and transformation. And we need this. We need the compassion. We need the masculine protection. Both of you, you need to protect each other. You need the feminine qualities of the compassion for each other. You need the love for each other. You need everything like that. So really think about how much you're giving to the other person and what they need and what you need. Um, because this is the time that we need to stand together, not apart. Now let's get the clarifier for that. And I thought this was great <laughs> because, uh, this is a three and it's reunion and the cops beautiful. We got the three reunion the other day. Be carefree. Enjoy the company of those who make you laugh. You gather together with friends and family to celebrate. 
So this three predicts weddings, parties, reunions, and precious time with the people you love who make you feel like your true self. Their company is uplifting, fun, and replenishing. If you're single and looking for love, there may also be an opportunity for flirtation. And if you're working on a creative project, now is the time to get into the zone. The reason we have been working on self is because when we go through this healing transformation, the death of the old 3D and the birth of the new. We are going to need this because the Trinity is going to help us come together in a reunion. And then the two and the three is a five change transformation. So, so far, this reading is very foretelling of what we are going to be going through real soon. This is just about, just about completion. I feel it. I really feel it. Now, uh, the other one we got, and we got her the other day. We got a number two, which this is a, um, a good card. It's the maiden. And this is kind of the inner child of the bunch. Follow your dreams, discover your passions, address self-imposed limits and restrictions, increase independence, seek your own answers, release feelings of fear and abandonment, craving attention, needing rescue, expressing goals and desires, be true to self, acting with empathy. We have to think about what we're doing. We have all the signs. The maiden walks on an unfamiliar path, but does with confidence and grace. She has been taught by those around her that it is not selfish or conceit to follow your dreams and activ actively work to manifest her goals and desires. She does so without needing permission for anyone. Much like her male counterpart, the youth and modern maiden is not afraid to ask questions, challenge the answers, and be the adventurous explorer. But while the youth explores new horizons, the maiden explores herself. The maiden is equally interested in first discovering and then nurturing her interest and increasing her self-knowledge and exploring her waking sexuality. She forms relationships with healthy boundaries and expresses her sexuality with innocence, pride, and confidence. When she chooses to take a lover for the first time, it will be done without shame or fear of judgment. If she chooses to remain alone, it is not because she believes herself to be undesirable, but because she does not believe that she needs a lover in order to be happy or fulfilled. The maiden card is one of the youthful conf confidence, empowerment, and increasing independence. She is fertile, but uses the fertile nature to create, express, and explore. She is on a journey of self-discovery, focused on learning more about who she is and what makes her happy. And she, she knows that her explorations in this present will give rise to a future self who knows what she wants from her life and is not afraid to make it happen. In the past, the maiden was expected to do as she was told, and be true to the expectations of family and society. In the present, the maiden chooses to begin the journey towards self-awareness and empowerment. Uh, yeah, uh, I just told my husband that. I said, you know, when whenever this world changes and we get rid of the bad, we have to be changing ourselves because we're part of the bad. We have done bad things. Each one of us has done something stupid in our life. that may have hurt somebody or did something. We could have said something, did something, whatever we did, you know, we've done it. We've done it as a child. We've done stupid things, uh, taken a piece of bubble gum out of a store. Who knows what we did, but we've done it. I don't remember half the crap, but I'm sure I did something. I, I can just picture it. King of Swords is the clarifier for the maiden. And that's ambition. Look to the facts before you make the decision. 
The man is clever and is often a strong leader in a professional career. He's great strategic, the charm, the ambition, but can exert pressure too. He's impatient to succeed. He can be relied upon to offer calm, logical judgment. Pressure too and impatient. An additional meaning is the legal issues need your attention just now. If the king comes as you card, you're reading, take a logical approach that is time for mental agility rather than emotion. We had quite a few emotion cards yesterday. And yeah, she's going into the unknown path. We're going through this. We're going to be going through this, the, the healing. And the, we need the togetherness, okay? She's going into the unknown path with a portal back there. And her little white bunny, which is spring. We've been getting a lot of rabbits. And he's got the ambition with the shark circling around him. He's ambitious. But he's saying to watch what you're doing. Be careful because he's he's she's journeying. But yeah, he's got a shark over him. You got to be careful with the sly ones. The sly guys and girls. Okay, now we got one more, and I call this the five of water, the praying woman, the meditating woman or man. Um, this is loss, betrayal, fear, doubt, hopelessness, isolation, self-pity, and blame. We just talked about self-pity and blame. We really need to look at what we're doing and not blame anybody because it is nobody's fault but our own, period. Feeling alone and isolated, without hope, consumed by fears and doubts, unable to see a way forward, trapped in the moment, feeling angry and betrayed, mourn your loss, playing the victim. The five of water represents feeling of fear, doubt, and hopelessness that can cloud our minds and hearts and give rise to confusion, misunderstanding, and anger. These emotions are often born of our own pain or insecurities and can cloud our ability to see and love the love that surrounds us. All too often, when we experience a moment of great hurt or loss, we can feel alone as if no one could possibly understand the depths of anguish we are feeling. Whether it be the end of a marriage or a friendship, the death of a loved one, or a battle with mental illness, we can sometimes find ourselves weighed down by pain and suffering and blind to the beauty and love that surrounds us. Loss of any kind causes us to experience a range of emotion, including sadness, fear, confusion, guilt, regret, anger, and betrayal. Sometimes we can even experience a complete absence of emotion. To think of the future serves only to add to the burden of sorrow because all hope seems gone. The Five of Water is a challenging card because it is not one that offers any real comfort. Loss is something we all experience, and if we are already vulnerable and sensitive to hurt, then it can be overwhelming. The death of a loved one, the loss of a friend, being betrayed by someone we trusted and loved. There are no words of comfort that will lessen the pain we feel. The five of water symbolizes that need to allow yourself to work through your grief and to take as much time as you need. Allow the emotions to flow and flow along with them, but not to the extent that they threaten to overwhelm you or have you lashing out at others. You need to remember that you have people around you who love you. Look up. While you may feel alone, you are not. There are people around you who have also experienced loss. They know. They understand. Allow them to be there for you in your time of need. I completely agree. We have all had some kind of a loss. Uh, and we understand that loss is traumatic. I mean, it is, it, it, it's like that gut punch in your heart. It, it, it hurts. And I know some people that have never got on with their life because of the loss and the sadness that they feel. And it's horrible. The last card we got with the Dreams of Gaia and the Oceanic Tarot. The clarifying card for the Woe is Me card is the Nine of Cups. We had this yesterday, a wish. A wish, a wish, a wish. 
You're perfectly placed to manifest what you dream of, so make a wish. Happiness, support, love, entertaining, harmony at home, relationship, abundance. The Nine of Cups is the magical wish card of the tarot. When it appears in your reading, you benefit from love, friendship, support in your projects and harmony at home. All aspects of your life flourish and you're feeling content and fulfilled. The only glitch is being a little smug to be sensitive in your enthusiasm. To share your good fortune, an additional meaning is entertaining and socializing. Um, we're going to have a reunion, a revival like we've never seen before, and we're all involved. It is going to be something that is going to be the most beautiful thing we have ever witnessed. We will know it was the hand of our creator. Now, uh, that was the oceanic tarot that I did with clarifiers for the dreams of Gaia and the practical magic. And this one, I'm going to sneeze. I know I'm going to sneeze. I can feel it. Okay, now, my husband shuffled and shuffled this practical magic deck. I heard him over there. He says, the card will not come out. I says, the card will come out when it's ready to come out. I said, that's a new deck. The cards like to, you know not come out as easy but they do come out and you gotta work with the deck so a card finally flew out and he says to me you've got to be kidding i said what he says you've got to. i said you know he's he's he believes in it but he's kind of a see it to believe it type of guy so and he has some religion with him so do i i mean we all have i mean and it's okay to believe in some of that but we have to be spiritual about it. I think religion is going to change and we're going to combine everything, uh, the truth about our creator, the truth about our spirituality, everything. I'm not going to say theirs is a lie. I'm not going to say ours is a lie. I'm not going to say that. But when the cards come out and you have some energy on that card, you know, when I'm doing a channeling, yes, I'm channeling for the collective. But some of my energy, I am part of the collective. So is he. So when you have him in your hand and you've got that higher energy in your hand that you're doing the channeling, some of you will come out in that. And he got a, he, he kept looking at it going, you've got to be kidding. And I said, I told you, the cards will tell you what you need to know. And he got number 27, let the past die, raven skin. Raven Ken. He is going through parts of his dark night of the soul. Remember, I tell you, the dark night of the soul never ends. It, the worst part that you go through is the first one you go through because that starts to release a lot of childhood trauma that we've all put in the background and not thought of until this awakening has happened and we're all starting to look into things more and think about them and see a different perception of it. So death, this is a very interesting card. It's going to be an interesting reading because I think we are all going through parts of this. Death and endings don't have to be scary. They can be the start of something new and wonderful. If you have the courage to let go and move forward, death is part of the cycle of life and a reminder to live every moment to the to the full without regret to live your best life while you can and not put off to a later date what you most want and hope for. It's a motivation to tell people you love them, to make amends, to follow your dream, to check in with yourself and your moral beliefs and priorities. Death brings grief and despair, but in its non-literal sense, it also creates focus and clarity nudges you forward on your path and ushers in rebirth and growth. It asks, what are you willing to give up in order to gain all that you dream of? Don't panic, though. The death card is in divination is not about a literal death. 
It's about endings, change, and transformation. Drawing this card indicates an unexpected change, the conclusion to a situation or the destruction of something you've held dear. It could be the metaphorical death of part of yourself that you're facing, the loss of a job or a passion or a dramatic change in your career. Wow. Okay, I just told you we're going to come to a conclusion. We've got the transformation card and we've got the change. <laughs> Family upheaval that plunges you into free fall. You may be mourning the loss of a home or a place with special meaning to you. The end of an important relationship or a betrayal by someone you trusted. The demise of a dream or the fizzling out of a hope you'd been counting on. The abrupt loss of the way you saw your life unfolding and the necessity to create a new future. Serious illness or injury can impact on plans and capabilities. And you may be grieving for things you wanted to do, but are no longer able to. Know that you are strong enough to handle this loss and that there is something wonderful ahead that you weren't able to see while you were assumed, consumed by the thing that is now ending. It can be a hidden blessing to be forced out of your comfort zone and pushed to let go of past issues, past relationships, or past beliefs that you've outgrown. Sudden change can feel scary and daunting. It may be painful and unwanting, but letting go will transform your whole life and allow you to become all that you are meant to be. While this card signifies the end of something in your life, don't be afraid. You can choose to see this as a positive, for new growth to emerge and new dreams to weave into being something, sometimes the old must die. From death, there is rebirth. And from loss, there is transition and transformation. And a whole new space and energy for something wonderful to grow. Honor the old and thank it. Then embrace the new. Seek out all the opportunities that are waiting for you once you can let the past die and let go of what was being been holding you back. This is a card of transformation. If you're ready to embrace change and move forward into your bright new existence. Wow. Uh, let's see. We got the wish card. We got the let's not feel sorry for ourselves. We got the maiden going into the unknown. We got the ambition with the shark circling to be careful. And we got the transformation and we got the reunion, the celebration, the healing and the partnership. And we got let the past die, 27, which is a nine. <laughs> Great reading, guys. This was a, a really nice magical Monday in coffee. And I can't wait to find out more about what was going on. Because, you know, I was also watching the Super Bowl game when they were showing these reviews. And in the beginning, when uh, Kansas City Chiefs were kind of getting pulverized, I noticed the one number that tackled them. It was 33. I'll just leave it at that. But 12-1-3, the divide. 33 is a man it is a power number but it is also a sign for them 33 degree you know 33 yeah, just... so we'll just bypass that and now my husband no he didn't do this one i did this one i'm gonna let you know i did the gaia oracle and the clarifiers and he did the uh, practical magic one so far and he did a couple more so now we have the messenger oracle and you know this is a small book but this is the graphics and the card i love these cards and i like the short messages because they're easy to shuffle because they're small and uh they give great messages and it's it's short so i i'll take a few of these cards because it is a short message and i could not believe i just said to my husband it was yesterday because we've been doing a lot of talking about this. And I said, right now we're kind of in the calm of the storm, but it's going to get really rough. Uh, it's going to get 
real bad. We're not over yet. We're not we're not in the eye of the storm, but we're we're kind of getting out of the eye of the storm and we're getting into the last raw, the finale. The famous final scene. Calm in the storm. And we've got him before, and look at this card. He's got the seashell glowing with all kinds of energy. And you've got the purple and gold, the purple and gold. The purple is intuition and royalty and the gold. We know what the gold is. He has beautiful gold on his cheeks. He's a merman. And he's got an amber third eye and he's got a turtle right here on his golden crown he is amazing and he's got rainbows behind him there are times when life offers us nothing but chaos and turmoil wave upon wave knocks us down sometimes before we can regain our feet be still take a moment to breathe express your thoughts and feelings and then do what you can to find a peaceful place of calm within you if another is in need, offer them safe harbor. Be a port in their storm. Yeah, I completely agree. <coughs> and I think now is when we really need to be alert. Somebody is burning out and peeling out in a truck. I don't know what they're doing. Um, we, <laughs> we need to step up with the plate now, guys. We have made the shift. We shifted. I realize we're not sure we shifted, but we did shift. So there is going to be a major, major, like, crossing the Red Sea moment type thing. Like, we're going to feel like it is the last minute. It's going to be like the Esther story in the Bible. And if you haven't seen that, see it. Because Esther, I'll, I'll tell you the gist of it, okay? In the Bible, because I, I watched it on video when I heard about this, because I'm thinking, yeah, this is like an Esther moment. Esther was a Jewish woman that the king fell in love with, but no one knew she was Jewish. She was the cousin of the man that Rick was raising her. And she didn't tell anybody. They weren't supposed to. So he fell in love with her and he married her. Well, um, this guy, and I can never remember his name. I'm not good with names. Um, Malachi. Malachi was the king's right-hand man, and he was going to convince the king to kill all the Jews, uh, hang them all. And the king agreed. And so the next morning, they were going to hang all the Jews. And Esther was very upset because those were her family. So she called her service girls around, and they all prayed all night. She says, we have to, we have to pray all night, which that's manifesting, basically, too. So they prayed all night in a circle, and they held hands. And the next morning, um, she got up, and she went to a meal, a lunch with Malachi and the king and she told the king what Malachi had did that he planned this the king instead had Malachi hung on his own hanging so and then there was celebration and they had picnics and everybody celebrated and there wasn't a biased judgment anymore because he was married to a Jewish girl and he loved her very much so that was that Esther moment that moment they had that one night the one night to manifest and pray together and they did it they flipped the switch the next morning and the bad guy that was going to do all the harm was hung with his own noose so that is what is going to happen we are going to have that esther moment so we need to be positive and we need to be strong and we need to ride the wave right now because we got the observe in silence the fox 
And when I got this card, I knew what it meant because I told my husband a while back, I said, keep your friends close and your enemies closer because you don't want to fight with your enemy because then they go away and you don't know what they're up to. You want to be their buddy. So they tell you what they're up to, you know. Now is not the time to be the life of the party, nor to step forward in the role of leader or teacher. Be cautious. It may not be wise to draw attention to yourself or to reveal your plans to others at this time. Instead, be silent. Step back. Be still. Watch those around you and be mindful of what you see, hear, and feel. Trust in your instincts and intuition and let them guide your steps. I completely agree. That's why I keep telling everybody to stay in your own lane right now. Don't go crazy and want to jump lanes and be the life of the party and lead the way because that ain't a good idea. This has to play itself out and we have to watch, but we have to protect ourselves too. So we might have to get a little bit involved if it comes to us, you know, if they involve us, but we should just be, we should be fine. Time to reflect. Have you been rushing along, living from one moment to the next without thought or care? Have you failed to notice and acknowledge all that you have achieved and accomplished? Stop, take a moment to pause and reflect upon all that has happened and all that is happening. See how you have grown, see all you have succeeded in accomplishing. Acknowledge and delight in your journey and understand how it has played a part in you, creating the you who live in the present. This is what we need to do. We do need to reflect on what we've done and where we've been. And that gives us a better perception on what's going on in our mind and in our heart. Because we have to really, really work on ourselves. If someone asks us for help, then we help. But if they don't ask us for help, we need to try to stand back and just let their scenario play out. Because everybody has their own scenario. Everybody has their own story, their own journey, and it will play out. So it, when we interfere, remember, we change the outcome. So unless we're protecting and saving somebody that we love or something like that, we got to be careful when we're jumping into something. Maybe their outcome was supposed to be that and you jumped in and changed the whole thing. If you're meant to jump in, then you're meant to jump in. You'll know it. You'll feel it. You'll have that intuition that, yep, I, I need to do something. Or that intuition like, oh, no, that's not good. I got to whack away, you know, and just walk away because we have to really think about what we're doing right now. My husband did the Soul Helper Oracle, and he could not believe the card that came out. He just sat over there in awe. And I thought it was interesting because, you know what? I think we've had this card one time. This card does not come out a lot. It's a number 25, a 7, and he was born on the 7th day. Protect what you love. It is your duty and responsibility. And she's coddling a puppy. He loves dogs. He would love to rescue. Me too. I love animals. We rescue animals when we can. <clears throat> and he thought this was a beautiful card. And it really hit him. And I read it to him. And it hit him. You are responsible for the things and beings around you. The well-being of your loved ones should be your primary concern. You are responsible for protecting them, which involves being mindful of their needs, but you are also responsible for yourself, your safety, well-being, and dreams. Protect all of these two. Protect everything that you love, everything that is dear to you, whether a person or an animal, an idea, or indeed your health. Fight for it. Remember your duty and do not worry about what other people think or say. Stop trying to please everyone and saying yes to everything right now today is the day to begin protecting your own boundaries and those of the people who trust you and whom you love you are a noble warrior of light within whom beats a great and loving heart 
You have the right and the sacred duty to bring confidence, security, and dignity to the world. You have drawn this card because it is one of your greatest strengths to protect others. Remember this live accordingly and feel the strength within you. Be sure to give this aspect of yourself more space. You also have the precious gift of being able to give comfort, which gives you strength and confidence. Remember this too and use it generously. Give your loved ones your time, reassurance, and comforting love, and you will receive all of these many times over in return. Your helpers for the next 21 days, the power animal is the lion, the herbal essence oil is the lemongrass, the healing crystal is the ametrine, and the number is seven. That was a beautiful card. Number seven indicates that you should only trust the magic of your heart. You will be given the gift of light that makes a deep connection between you and the mysteries of your life. Over the next few days, fill your soul path with love even more than usual. Love every moment, love everything and everyone, and you will become the magic of your heart. The energy field of number seven is like a gateway of light. It is death, birth, magic, light, and completion of a stage in life. Number seven brings new soul paths. Yeah, we are on a new soul path. All of us are on a new soul path. And I can't wait till this crap, this yucky stuff is over. I keep, my, me and my husband keep saying patience grasshopper because both of us want it over. And I'm sure everybody else does. We've had enough. <laughs> Now, the angels and ancestors, Oracle, and my husband did this one. He loved the cards that come out. Now, the first one he got was Peacemaker. A harmonious resolution is possible. We got the white buffalo and the Indian with the peace pipe the other day. And I think that is a sign, definitely. Choose peace. Conflicts are coming to an end. You deserve to experience happiness and contentment. The Peacemaker card portrays a Lakota First Nations woman honoring the Lakota deity, white buffalo calf woman who brought the sacred pipe to the people. This pipe, which she holds in her hands, is a symbol of peace, emblematic of sur surrendering the need to fight and offering harmony instead. The peacemaker is a soul who knows what it's perfect to feel under threat and to stand up for what she believes in and what is right. Her medicine helps you to take the higher road in every situation. Even if you're under pressure to make a quick decision, it is a reminder that within your hands lies the power to make the right choice for all involved. You may be feeling on edge due to a stressful situation. There's a warrior within you that wants to rise up, prove your point, and get the truth across. But you're being reminded by the ancestor wisdom that truth will always be revealed in the end. It's more important at this time to avoid arguments or heated discussions where, where you know you'll be fighting a losing battle. There is much more power in choosing to move forward from a higher perspective. This will allow you to connect deeply to the guidance within and the intuition that will lead you towards the healing of the whole situation, along with any wounds it may have inflicted on you. Choose peace. And no, it is calling you. I, I love that card. And I'm glad it keeps coming up. Because if it keeps coming up, it means that we are going to peace. And I know we are. We got the hunter. Track down your fears and desires. Every time I get this card, my husband got this card. But every time I get this card, I, I think of that, you know, cue the card. The hunters will become the hunted. The whistleblowers, I'm watching a whistleblower right now. The whistleblowers already whistled in 2020 and beyond. So there's already stuff going on and it's very interesting. Track down all your fearful thoughts and feelings. When you find them, you will find your desire to. The Hunter card is based on my favorite Celtic teacher, Serenus. 
He is the stag teacher of the wild and represents both the hunted and the hunter. Similarity, the hunter helps you connect with an energy that is both fearful and fearless. Your fears are the only things that are standing between you and what you desire at this time. So you have to come face to face with them as the hunter does with wild animals and go beyond them. Instead of being hunted down by your fears or other feelings that you have buried, become the hunter. You are being given confidence and strength at this time. So use your power to make a difference. You are not here to cower away or live in the shadows. You are here to realize your fullest potential. But this can only occur when you step up and do what needs to be done. When this card arises, there could be an opportunity to face an aspect of your past or bring closure to a situation that has been haunting you. If you are a man or identify as a male, this card represents your masculinity and an opportunity to know yourself more deeply. If you are a female or identify as a female, this card represents your capacity to be strong and powerful and overcome limitations. That was a great card for us for today. And I need coffee. So we have the gateway of light activation. Now, my husband pulled these cards, too, and these were very beautiful cards that come out. We got the Sephram's gateway, voice activation, angelic attunement, and divine support. Yes, we have divine support right now going on. The Sephirim at are the highest from of in form of angelic beings who are said to radiate from the heart of source. They have been described in many different ways through the ages, but what is common is the idea that a brilliant light immense from them. The word Sephirim means burning ones, for in ancient times, Light was associated with fire, as this was the main source of light within homes. These beings of infinite light are essentially divine love that is taking on an angelic form in the order to serve the universe. When they have appeared physically, they have been described as having six wings, and they are known for their heavenly voices. In fact, miraculously, planetary shifts are reported to take place when they sing. In the heavenly realms, they sing in constant praise of the creator. Other angelic presence report to them with regard to their spiritual duty. As it were, it doesn't operate in such a linear way, but this is the best way for us to understand the process. If you have ever woken up hearing your name being sung, the Sephirim have visited you. When they come to you, Know that you are blessed to be in the presence of angelic beings that emit directly from the heart of source. Their voices will help awaken the angelic presence you hold within. So what you can support so that you can support the expansion of the world. That is a beautiful card for us. You are blessed to receive the light of the surfram. Know that these beings of infinite light are singing your name in the heavens to unlock the power of your own voice. Angelic support surrounds you at this time. Know that you are safe, for you are being held by the presence of love. The Sephirim are witnessing the glory of your being and active, activating your angelic qualities. You can care deeply about the welfare of the planet and all her beings in fact, you are hoping to make a difference in the world, and the reason for this is you are carrying angelic light. Let it shine on the world around you. Wow, that is a beautiful card. Now, the last one we have is the Divine Master, and he got three cards from the Divine Master. And these were beautiful cards. He got the Mary Magdalene card, sacred vessel. You are the answer. Be guided to your purpose. All of this is guiding us to our purpose. We will find our purpose when the right time is. We have to be patient. 
Mary Magdalene was one of the original followers of Jesus Christ. It has been recorded that she had the first vision of the risen Christ when she went to his tomb on Easter morning and was through and was through this vision that he revealed to her his sacred teachings and initiated her as a teacher. She was the apostle. Yeah, because, you know, she was sitting at the apostles table. That didn't make any sense. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, she's this and she's that. And no, she wasn't. <laughs> she was an apostle. And it is therefore through her that a pivotal aspect of the original teachings of Christ has reached the world. Mary was a highly sensitive clairvoyant and, ha and it has been speculated that she was the partner wife, divine consort of Jesus, if Jesus was the vehicle for the Christ energy. Mary was the vehicle for the Magdalene, a powerful feminine force that renders all beings equal and helps the world see that the voice of the feminine are not only important, but the sacred force that can save the world from ruin. You know, that really makes sense to me, because think about it. The mother usually band-aids the boo-boo. The mothers usually had the compassion. The fathers were the protective and the strength. So if we are basically like our creators, I think there was a masculine and feminine there. I think the masculine and feminine energy was there. It have to be. Okay, let's see. You are the answer you seek. You hold the treasure, the magic, and the mystery. Right now, you are being encouraged to recognize that you are a valuable part of the universe plan, universe's plan. If you have a strong desire to share what you have learned, it's time to do so. This can be scary and sometimes overwhelming because putting yourself out there can leave you open to scrutiny. But if you are comfortable... With your gifts and teachings, you hold a sacred energy that allows others to see you clearly. The light of the Magdalene is surrounding you now and encouraging you to recognize that the healing you have experienced is actually what you are here to teach. Take some time to reflect on what you have overcome and see that this experience can help many. Your personal testimony can move others and even mountains. Learn, lean on your creator and know that you are being called to be a vessel for the sacred. We got reflection. Calm in the storm. Um, I don't know where, yeah, here it is. Time to reflect. He did these cards. So uh, he did, and we got reflection a few days ago. So it rained today, so now the pollen's floating around the yard. Now my face is freaking out again. Sorry, guys, but I have a lot of pollen, itchy face things, plus my hair sometimes drives me crazy. So bear with me. Okay, now we got Brig Brigid, Inner Fire. Let your passion lead you to your purpose. Brigid is a Celtic teacher of Ireland who is closely, when I say teacher, I mean, they're saying goddess or God, which I don't care for that. And a lot of them didn't like that. Toth did not like that because Toth is a teacher. So when I say teacher in these, they usually say goddess and God, but I am not going to use, I do not use that in my, because there is as far as I know, only one creator. Until I know different, that is what it is. And people called the creator God. And I don't think he should, if if that is God's name, it could be sort, it could be anything. Well, it could be anything we want it to be. We shouldn't be calling anything else that also. So that's how I feel about that. And that's just my feel. So her name means the bright one. 
And she is a teacher of fertility, healing, and all the renewing energies that spring brings in Ireland. She is the protector of wells and holy shrines. That is interesting because I've heard they're cleaning the springs down here. Originally a pagan teacher, Brigid, Brigid was so well loved that when Christ, Christianity came to the British Isle, she was adopted as a saint, and thus she brings the energy of resilience, strength, and survival. We got the resilience card, I think, yesterday. You are a highly driven, passionate being with the ability to make great changes in the world. Follow what lights you up, for the spiritual fire within you is growing and glowing, and the sharing of your passion will lead to the fulfilling of your purpose. Brigid is coming to you now because it might feel as though your life is changing and the ground is unsteady beneath you. But trust that it is best to change when change is unfolding around you. This is a powerful time for you to begin anew. The seeds that you have planted with your dreams are being given the opportunity to germinate and grow. Trust in your passion and don't let the limiting beliefs or doubts of others be projected onto you. Let your fire burn and roar. Wow. Okay. That is really cool. You know, it looks like I'm having like a really bad hair day in Florida. And I am. <laughs> oh, you guys will understand, don't you? Because like, just call me the girl with the wild hair. Okay. Let's see. The blue beings, light transmission, wounds healed, important information, charging up. There are many names for these beings, such as extraterrestrials, star people, star ancestors, sky people, and more. Whatever they are called, they are divinely inspired, evolved beings existing in dimensions that we cannot even comprehend. These dimensions are alternate realities and so far in the future that these bright ones see beyond anything that troubles you, us now. These overseers of the cosmo, cosmos are like angels in the sense that they are expressions of the divine, fully connected to the heart of source. Star beings exist in multiple forms and in this case appear as blue beings. They are here to transport you energetically to their healing sanctuaries so that you can be whole and healed. They come in peace, radiating the highest light and frequency that can assist you on all levels of healing. They work on a quantum level and thus when their healing touches your life, the root cause of any dis-ease is eliminated and completely healed. What? Have we been saying, my husband and I? Why? Wow. We're going to be, I'm telling you, we're going to be completely healed. I really feel it. You know, I heard somebody say that we go back 30 years. Could you imagine going back 30 years? Seriously. I would be like in my 20s. My parents would be like in their 40s and 50s. Yeah, that would be really cool. And it would be cool. You know, I've also felt too that they said they have, we have to have a, a redo, but they only said 2020 because that was the election. What if it was a redo back to 2012? And that everything that happened, we remember, but everybody that passed is back. Could you imagine? Wow. Okay. I, I'm just dreaming now. You know. Uh, I don't even remember where I was because this was so good. Okay. I'm just going to start reading it again. Let me see. There are many names for these beings, such as extraterrestrial, star people, star ancestors, sky people, and more. Whatever they are called, they are divinely inspired, evolving beings existing in dimensions that we can, 
can't even comprehend. These dimensions are al alternate realities and so far in the future that these bright ones see beyond anything that troubles us now. These overseers of the cosmos are like angels in the sense that they are expressions of the divine fully connected to the heart of source. Star beings exist in multiple forms and in this case appear as blue beings. They are here to transport you energetically to their healing sanctuary. So I've read all this, but I needed to read it again because I didn't grasp it. I know I needed to read it again. So that you can be whole and healed. My husband is going to freak when he hears this card. He took a nap while I did my reading. He says, I got to take a nap so you can do your reading. <laughs> he doesn't want to be on camera. I don't blame him. He's I had to like do it a couple of times and start over because I really didn't want to be on camera. I'm, I'm like usually to myself and, you know, I'm just swinging in my outdoor hobo, hobo swing and just enjoying my life and meditating. I needed to come out to help everybody. Okay, uh, they come in peace, radiating the highest light and frequency that can assist you on all levels of healing. They work on a quantum level, and thus, when their healing touches your life, the root cause of any disease is eliminated and completely healed. If the world feels overwhelm overwhelming or intense, know that hands of light are upon you now. Take a moment to retreat to a safe place to cleanse and recharge your energy. Don't feel guilty about it. You don't need to be constantly constantly in the limelight or in the service of, of others. This is not a time to sacrifice your own well-being in order to serve others. Take the time to recharge, observe, and review how you feel. Yeah, we need to really work on ourselves right now. We've been through a lot. We just don't realize it. This is a deeply healing time for you. You may have been on this path for a long time and experienced miraculous and healing moments, but now you are going deeper. This is about healing from the inside out. Be open to learning new information and gaining insight about your life that will bring you a deeper state of wholeness and connection with yourself. Cosmic beings are surrounding you now and are leading the way on this ever unfolding journey. That was the last card for the day. And what is interesting, and I want you to go back, I think the other card the other day, we had abundance in the beginning and we had abundance in the end. We had <laughs> the healing card in the very beginning with transformation. And we had the healing card with blue beings at the very end that this was total illuminating healing in the quantum field and i was just thinking today as i was shuffling these as a i i got a thing it said the med beds are being delivered i really don't think we're going to do the med bed i think it's going to be frequency healing and light and sound i have said that for a long time i've dreamt that because um, I feel that we could have always healed ourselves. We just didn't know how. You know, they changed the frequency. Everything happened in the se right now, the 70s. 1970, what was it? 1971. Nixon took us all off the gold standard. Uh, Roe v. Wade come out. Uh, abortion. Um, and then in 73, uh, Kissinger did something there's a whole story behind all of this if you watch bull pony b-o and then pony p-o-l-n-y i think it's gold 2020 or something like that on youtube he explains that in detail and uh that is what's happening whether we think so or not i mean there is too much coming out in these cards that are showing us this i mean transformation peace we the wish mary magdalene the inner fire and the light transmission of healing charging up the full healing 
I mean, I can't even explain what cards, you know, were pulled out. It's, it's just freaky. Um, well, that's going to be it for today because I have to really resonate on what I drew and what my husband drew and what come out because these cards were very telling about everything that me and my husband have been discussing for the last three or four days. And things have been going beautiful in our life. So we're changing the direction of our life. And I know I want you guys to try to do the same. Now, not a lot of people are getting into it. I'm just going to keep repeating it because I'd like to see more. If not, that's fine. I get it. You, you don't want to play with your imaginary person, you know. But we, I started a game because I wanted to see how many people will come in and play with their inner child. And I wanted everybody to hit the like button, which we're going to call the magic manifestation button. Do a small manifestation and work on it. Work on your manifestation and your meditation and see how long it takes you to manifest it. Nothing crazy, just something small, something significant in your life and try to do that. So if you want to play, I've seen like maybe nine, 17 people, this and that. Um, but I'd love to see more people because you got 150 people and you got 20 that liked it and are manifesting. So that's kind of scary at this point in, in time. So I kind of want to see how many people and comment in the comments if you want to tell me. Okay, I love everybody and may every step in your journey be magical. And you know what? On Magic Monday, I hope you have a beautiful, magical Monday and just be you.